Good evening. All you earthlings. I'm making a short video as I'm uh, driving through the country in Dripping Springs, Texas, and noticing these spectacular crepuscular rays uh, that are a little different than I've ever seen them. So normally you see like one patch of crepuscular rays going just like that in one patch. Well, here we got one, two, three patches of crepuscular rays. And I'll, I'm gonna zoom in on each of them. I mean, they're not parallel, but they're, you know, they're coming down closer to parallel than normal. But these out here are showing a completely different geometry. I mean, look at that geometry. And then come on over here to this side, check out this side. What? Look how amazing that is. So if you if you take, I mean, simple geometry, folks. The, the sun is local. If you follow the lines up here, boom. Not exactly sure how, how tall it is, but on the flat earth model, the sun is local. And there are many, many reasons why. This is one of them, because it visibly looks local. The rays visibly look like it's shining from above, from the apex. Crepuscular rays lead from the, the, the top of the apex up here, down like a pyramid fashion. And that's exactly what we see. Beautiful, spectacular crepuscular rays. Uh, another reason why the sun is small and local is because we have drastic temperature fluctuation across a, a long distance, which is, according to the size of the earth, a relatively tiny, minuscule distance. Let's say, let's say we're, we're in Dripping Springs, Austin, Texas. So let's say we go up to well, Dallas, Texas, North Texas, and then we go up to Colorado. See how, and, uh, and then you go up to Canada. You know how much drastic the temperature changes are across the the earth um, if the earth was a globe tiny globe a pebble and the Sun is 93 million miles away a hundred times larger in diameter than the earth then a tiny little 23 degree tilt of this tiny little pebble would be insignificant relative to the size and scales of the heliocentric model um, but the you know the temperature the seasons act work just like a heat lamp works over a table you put a heat lamp over a table and you put it on a circuit track and going around in circles guess what there's gonna be hotter over where the Sun is in the center in this case like the equator um, and uh, and colder in the Arctic regions where the Sun is not circling around so that is another proof of the small local sun of flat earth that there's a tiny sun above us and it's not as that big earth is much larger than the sun and uh the sun is in our atmosphere or right above it or some you know there we don't know exactly because none of us have been up there uh, there's no speculation and assumption in flat earth we uh uh, just see things and observe them and and uh, make our conclusions from what from the uh, evidence that we have in front of us no regurgitating what you were told what you heard and what you read in your science books your government funded science science classrooms and the government curriculum that's been spoon-fed to everybody that is not proof of anything that is proof that you know how to memorize and repeat things the Sun is small and local get a lo load of those crepuscular rays Beautiful. The earth is flat, y'all. The massive bodies of water, contained water, which rest perfectly flat and create a flat horizon for thousands of miles from shoreline to shoreline, prove it. Water, contained water that is, must be contained. The little water droplets in your meniscus in a glass uh, does not represent the saltwater oceans that span from one continent to the next. Contained water must be in a container. A globe, a ball, a random shape of rock is not a container. And no, gravity is not an answer because that is a theory and an assumption that has not been proven. The sun is small and local. Game over. Sphere.
theorists, conspiracy theorists, spherists. <laughs> Signing off. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you.